Hi, it's Sarah with House Copper, and we're gonna continue on with this video with how to do different seams. So I've done how to do a butt seam, and now we're gonna do how to do a lap seam, which is the next strongest or next weakest uh, seam, depending on which direction you're looking at it. So as I've covered before, the butt seam is just two uh, pieces of metal kind of adjoining like this, a lap seam is exactly what it sounds like, where the two sheets of metal overlap. The kind of hardest part about this seam um, is measuring what you're building and accounting for the overlap. As a general kind of uh, example, usually when Bob and I are building stuff, any lap seam is an eighth an inch. So then the other hard part is making sure that it's an eighth an inch on the top part of your seam and the bottom so it matches up and your uh, numbers make sense as you build. The other part is making sure that the middle part of the seam doesn't like bow so that you have this kind of thick chunk of solder showing. It usually can mean chances for leaks are a lot higher. It's just not as clean. It's rough on the outside. And, um, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, and the, the solder leaks all over if you don't have that nice and tight. And um, originally in the old days, the lap seams were done in the 1700s on the outside because they were using very different soldering techniques and soldering on the outside was really the only way to do a lap seam. Um, it did mean that the food would get stuck in the cracks on the inside and it just wouldn't be as food safe and obviously you'd deal with, you know, leftover grime and food and germs, and it just wasn't as sanitary. So Bob and I always solder on the inside. Um, but if you're doing a traditional official uh, redo of a piece, um, you would be doing soldering on your lap seams on the exterior, just as a tip. So it's not a difficult seam, it's more measuring than anything else and just making sure everything is nice and snug before we solder. So that's what we're gonna do is a lap seam. And there we have it. Let's go. All right, so in preparation to do a lap seam on this piece of copper that we're just gonna roll into um, a cylinder, um, you can see here is the preparation on the top. Now, obviously, I'm building cookware. If you aren't rolling an edge or beating an edge or wiring an edge, you would not need to do this. You would just do a lap seam straight across but I have cut this down to accommodate a really thin wire and I have gone in one eighth of an inch because that's the depth of the lap seam. And then if you can see the mark down here, um, it's a newer copper because this is a little oxidized. You can see that that line right there is my one eighth in to accommodate the one eighth in up here so that the lap seam matches straight across the entire length of the seam. Then I'm gonna roll this and then we're gonna get it nice and snug before we solder it. All right, so I have it rolled, and now I wanna make sure that this and this all line up so it's nice and snug before we solder. So if it doesn't line up nice, you put it on some sort of stake if you have it, and you'd press the edges to lay flat. You can always hammer along the seam just with a rawhide. But what you want to do is when you clamp, when you clamp it, you don't want there to be any gap right here in the center of your lap seam. So we look good to go. So now it's just soldering. So you're going to hold one side with a clamp, and then you're going to make sure that you match on the other side, and then you look for another clamp. Apparently, I, do I have one? And then um, once I find a clamp, I'll clamp it. But you're, you're clamping the very edges of your lap seam to hold it in place. And again, if you're, you're gaping here, you'd have to press down as you solder. But we don't have to worry about that. So we're just going to do a clean lap seam um, demo. With tin, you would just use the soldering iron. Um, with copper, you need to use the blowtorch. And um, you should be able to run your solder along the lap seam. No problem. As always, yes, I let you all know what I use when I am using different materials. So you're gonna flux 
and then I pre-cut a piece of solder and I lay it on where it catches on the seam. See, it rolls one way, but it catches that other way. I do it where it catches. Um, and then I'm gonna let it run. Once I start my torch up. And as you can see, shut this off. Here's the side where it ran on the outside. It's real clean. So that's what you want. You don't want there to be a lot of mess on the exterior. And then the inside obviously has more of the solder showing. Okay, so there is our lap seam, there's the inside of the lap seam, and um, now you can keep going with your build. I always recommend, I've learned the hard way, that if you're not gonna continue doing a whole bunch of soldering, wash the flux off right away because the flux will actually eat into the solder and make it look a little like dull and kind of yucky. So the sooner you can wash off the flux after you're done soldering, the better just for a cleaner, more silver finish to your soldering lines. Um, but anyway, so there it is. That's how to do a lap seam. That's it. Very simple. All you need to know about the lap seam. And obviously you can make adjustments depending on if you're wiring at the top and if you're doing other, you know, builds, but in general, there's your lap seam. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. It's always good to hear if I don't get to them right away, I will just not right away. Um, and uh, thank you so much for watching. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram under House Copper or pick up a copy of Copper Iron and Clay and um, read more about smithing and cooking. And I will um, keep doing these. I'll do a crimp seam next and uh, we'll just work our way through some of, some of these other techniques for this summer. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.